last week a whole series <laughs> full of light. And today's um, recognition, as you can tell, is all the shades of light. And then we'll be separating up the shades of light in the coming up weeks. And to recognize that those hues and those shades are part of us. And there are a few people I want to share with you their, their words today. Um, we'll call them luminaries as we journey forward. And we'll be revisiting these luminaries back and forth and adding a couple more in the coming weeks. But today we're going to work with Ken Wilber, Thomas Merton, and Eric Butterworth. Ken Wilber um, is the integral philosopher. And he invites us to contemplate this whole spectrum of consciousness as a canvas that spans from the darkest shades to the brightest hues, all of it. And in this vision, we are encouraged to embrace the richness of our experiences and recognizing that it's not monochrome, but a masterpiece of colors and subtle gradients. And in this metaphorical canvas, each color represents a unique facet of our existence. Every shade of gray signifies an intricate interplay of opposites. And that journey of consciousness is a dance between polarities, an exploration of contrasting elements that shape our understanding of reality. So think, think of like a cityscape where there's all kinds of cultures and perspectives and experiences that come all together. And in this cityscape, in this metropolis, there's contrast between light and shadows, joy and sorrow. There's a dance between life's vibrant colors and the downs, what we feel like are the grays. Thomas Merton, um, who's a contemplative mystic that we, we did a little slideshow on several months back, if you remember. Um, he offers the stained glass metaphor. He says, this is a sacred window of light that divine shines through, casting a spectrum of colors that dance upon the walls of our own consciousness. Merton says that the notion that our perceptions are filtered through stained glass of conditioned beliefs and cultural influences and our personal experiences. And that the shades of gray for Merton represents areas of our understanding that were not quite in focus. And that those areas invite us to gaze upon that glass into a pure, unfiltered light of mind. So consider a big global celebration. Imagine that everybody in the world could get together <laughs> from all various backgrounds and share moments of joy And the shades of gray symbolize the cultural nuances that shape everyone's experiences. And if we think of that, then grays or darker colors aren't things to be afraid of or ignored. It's something to explore. In the Buddhist teachings, they take that stained glass and they turn it into a tapestry of weavings and paintings. And just as a painter would paint different pigments, that weave of tapestry represents all of our different aspects. Each color representing a unique experience. And again, we still have those darker colors. And if we don't have sometimes the dark outline, the colors don't pop. I mean, look at these windows around you. They all have that dark outline around each of it. So you can actually see the colors that are there and the shapes. Imagine this diverse group of individuals, they bring unique perspectives. All the colors, all the grays merge together and you can find something common, something beautiful to show. 
I love that we're surrounded by all these windows. This because it's a great illustration of how different ways you can put together similar colors and come up. They're each unique, right? And yet they're each very beautiful. By the way, what was the search built as? Um, I can talk to you afterwards at cookie time and give you the history. Mm -hmm. And if we turn to Eric Butterworth, he talks about the same thing, but uses the garden as the metaphor. Now he's in our tradition of unity and new thought. And he says, imagine a garden where the colors of flowers symbolize the spectrum of human experiences. And the gray is that fertile soil underneath. And you can't have the pretty flowers <laughs> without the gray soil. And in this garden, the process of healing is tending to the soil, tending to those gray areas, cultivating that richness within, nurturing roots and allowing flowers of understanding to bloom. And Butterworth teaches us that by addressing the underlying causes of our perceptions and beliefs, we create a fertile ground of colors for our truth, our love, and our compassion to flourish. In Psalms, the book of Psalms, it says, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Just as a skilled gardener tends to wounded, wounded branches, the divine healer tends to the wounds of our hearts and offers that restoration. In the Buddhist teachings, healing is woven into that fabric and four noble truths. And the first truth, we acknowledge that there is any gray to begin with. We acknowledge that there is suffering. And in the process of healing, we recognize that those roots are there for a reason, because without roots, <laughs> you don't get any of the nourishment, right? So as we tend to those wounds, those wisdom and the liberation emerges. So again, our roots might be in that gray muck, but it also brings forth so much nutrition when we actually pay attention to it. We witness that interplay between the colors and the grays and the shades of gray. And we even get to choose in our garden, what are the weeds and what are the flowers? Because those aren't the same to everybody. And to heal is not merely to cover the wounds, but to engage in a whole process of nurturing. So we work with our mind and our body and our emotions and our spirit, and we delve in deep. So if you take any one of these metaphors that, that, that feel right to you and explore it fully, and allow those colors and those thoughts and emotions to come to the surface for you. Eric Butterworth says, the thoughts we choose to think are the tools we use to paint the canvas of our lives. The thoughts we choose to pay attention to. Again, what are your flowers and what are your weeds? The shades of gray, the areas where doubt and fear and confusion cast shadows, these are, again, unexplored areas. So in healing, we explore them. And in exploring them, they turn into the defining moments. <laughs> and we can really, really see what's happening. In the Christian tradition, healing is not merely a physical or emotional restoration. It's a recognition with divine source. In the words of Jesus, come to me and you are all weary and burdened and I will give you rest. This invitation, we find a promise of restoration, healing that transcends the limitations of our material world. Mindfulness, working with all of the shades of light. The past 
is already gone and the future is not yet here. The only moment for you to live is in this present moment. Those are words from Buddha, which fit with Jesus' words of, I am the light of the world and whoever follows will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Getting the point that all the traditions are saying the same thing. Pick your metaphor, right? Pick your metaphor for healing, to journey into the light, to be brave enough to walk in that pilgrimage that transcends any of the fear of the darkness and the shadows and the shades of gray. There's an image that's dear to my heart, and that's of the lotus. And it's from the Buddhist context, that unfolding of enlightenment. The lotus comes up from the muck, right? And it comes back down every day. When it folds up, it goes back into the muck. And when the sun comes out and the light's there, it comes back out. You can't have this beautiful flower without both. So we are born in the same way in our humanity. <laughs> we are a flower, a child, a stained glass window, a garden, a bowl. So in the next few weeks, hopefully, we're gonna learn to appreciate that whole spectrum. Vibrant colors, subtle shades of gray, discovering the divine light and which shades of light or hues that we're naturally working with and ones maybe we need to bring out just a little bit more. And those lights are the mid lanterns of our journey. And we navigate the consciousness and these are the lights. Faith, unfailing will, imagination, zeal, wisdom, strength, courage, power, love and curiosity. Discovering the harmony between all of those and what resonates in the deepest cores of our collective and individual being. You take a moment to pray with me. In the stillness of our souls, Acknowledging that divine light and source of all illumination. Like the radiant sun, this light shines with each of us, dispelling shadows of ignorance, awakening colors of wisdom and understanding. And as we stand in this light, may we be vessels of that divine radiance, casting away shadows that obscure our true nature. Yet we also embrace the beauty of the shadows, the mystery within the darkness. We understand that interplay of light and dark that is sacred dance, a cosmic balance that reveals a profound depth of our spiritual journey. In the embrace of darkness, we find hidden truths, mystery waiting to be unveiled, Today, we honor the shadows as sacred gateways to transformation. We navigate the consciousness of our, the canvas of our consciousness, recognizing the colors of our experiences. Each moment of brushstroke on the canvas of our lives, creating a masterpiece that reflects the divine artistry within each of us. In this palette of existence, our lives with vibrant colors, passion, gratitude, and love, embracing the full spectrum of human experience. We are grateful. We're grateful to be aware of this interwoven light and dark colors and grays. May we walk with reverence, knowing that every step connected to this divine tapestry of creation. And so it is.